Analogous. I don't know why I can't. <laughs> Analogous. <laughs> yeah, I know. Analogous, dude. If you, <laughs> if Joe had heard that, <laughs> you would not oh. hear the end of it for the rest of your life. I think you should keep saying it. I like it. <laughs> Always oh, leads straight back to anal. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. To the so. data limits of early computer software, <laughs> he admits to requiring a long time to build that motivation to begin in the first place. Prior to Dragon Quest VIII, Hori would write every line of dialogue for his games, even down to nameless NPCs. Wow. Yeah. Well, there's not much story in the beginning, so... I mean, th- th- that wouldn't be hard to do. Yeah, plus we don't originally have the Japanese games themselves per, like, translation of how little it might have been versus when it came here to the United States. Anyways, right. And then versus what we have when we played the mobile. Right. They would, I cannot judge any scale for that, of how much was actually done. But we'll see for, like, four, five, and six, or and seven. Yeah, leading up to eight, it says. So, leading up to eight. <laughs> yeah, leading up to eight. Ooh, see, so that's crazy. There is a me. lot of dialogue in seven and eight. Yeah. Like a lot. Well, good thing there's voice acting in eight. Yeah. <laughs> Other works. I had completely forgotten about this for years, but he was a supervisor for Chrono Motherfucking Trigger. Oh wow! The big three of that was obviously him. The big gooch. <laughs> the gooch. <laughs> Second uh, Gucci. Yeah. <laughs> and Akira obviously did the designs for Trigger. I keep forgetting <laughs> that uh that Schweiss ke- calls him the gooch. It's awesome. <laughs> I didn't even know he did that. Oh, you didn't know that? No, I didn't. Oh man. Yeah. <laughs> they we call have him the gooch. One non UFF listener <laughs> dropping the mic. Well, I I don't listen to it either, but I was there Ooh. for when they started calling him the goo. <laughs> <laughs> so like do it. you think he, uh, <laughs> we've all played Chrono Trigger in this room, right? I played some of it, yes. Oh, Craig, uh, what Caleb. the I do Okay, need okay, to this it. is strictly some of for it. Dylan then. <laughs> yes, some How of it. How do you feel about him being supervisor on Chrono Trigger? Well, the game turned out. Amazing, so I'm good with it. Yep. Literally, the only bad game that I have seen from him so far is Dragon Quest Two. Yeah, yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah, well, it's not that hard one. <laughs> you can only mention three. Yeah, and four, comparing four, it to so. Chrono Trigger doesn't even hold up at all. Yeah, that game's a masterpiece. So yeah, you take probably Hori. I don't. I can't say Hori in his prime because I don't know much about the series yet so we'll be the judge of that later but that at that time was definitely uh the gooch's prime the gooch's prime yes right around four five and six his Final prime Fantasy. was working with hori Ooh. Dun, dun. <laughs> okay <laughs> all right hori currently heads his own production company armor project a company that has an exclusive production contract with screenix the contract was established with Enix before the company merged with Square. Which probably makes sense on why nobody's been able to switch up the formula for the three. And Enix probably likes it that way, or they don't dare change it. Dare change Dragon Quest? The big three for Dragon Quest. Oh like yeah. they, They've been doing that with FF, and everybody, you know, new game, oh, we got to change everything up. Yeah. I think it's because of the, you know, the production company that they have with Armor Project that they might be the ones in control versus Square Enix the ones in control. Yeah. And plus mm-hmm. like the with those three guys Dragon Quest being as popular as it is in Japan, there's no way they would break up a team that consistently gets sales like that. Yeah. There's yeah. no way. Yep. So, we have some trivia here. Or he describes himself as a mischievous and finds shocking and surprising players to be one of the most rewarding parts of his career as a game designer. Yeah. Yep. Well, that makes sense because, like, at the. Oh, hi there. I hope you enjoyed this clip from Pup Puff Hour, a Dragon Quest podcast. If you happen to like what you see, you should subscribe. 
we have full podcast episodes detailing the main series of Dragon Quest 1 through 11. Oh yeah, and if you like the content, you should t- check out our other shows from all out Geekdom Entertainment. We have Nude Clan and Ultima Final Fantasy, the ultimate Final Fantasy podcast. Or, you know, Dragon Quest. <laughs>